Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be interviewing Ejam, who is a fourth year medical student in University of Turin. This has been one of our most requested interviews. So Ejam, thank you so, 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 so much for coming today and about to give us amazing information. Um, is there anything you would like to start with or should we just hop right into the questions? Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, so I'm going to start with what are the timetables like? Like, what does your daily schedule look like? Is it different from year to year? Could you talk about your daily timetables? Yeah, uh, we can uh, divide it to years because uh, especially first year is different from the other years. Uh, when you're a first year student in Turin, uh, you start like almost one month later than the other students. So uh, in first year, we start at the end of the October. And of course, the lectures um, continue until leaving mid June. And other students start at the begin at the beginning of the October, and they also finish at the mid June. And about the times of the lectures, if you are a first year student, you have to be present in the lectures from um, morning to the afternoon, like from nine to six p.m. It was like that in my year, and wow. but after okay. that it gets easier, <laughs> yeah, actually, because um, starting from the second year they uh, decrease the amount of the lectures. So we usually have lectures only in the uh, afternoon, and because the mornings are for the hospital practices. But since there's COVID nineteen right now, we don't have anything in the mornings, but the lectures in the afternoon. Okay, but th that's a really long day, like 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. How, how come first year is like so long? Do you have a lunch break? How, how are the classes? Yeah, we have like one hour lunch break. And I think after us, because like I'm the first class of the English medicine stream, after us, I think they decreased a little bit uh, the hours. But um, the workload was also huge in the first year because um, there was a massive uh, subject called like uh, cellular uh, biology and molecular genetics and it took a lot of hours and I used to go to hospital at 8 30 and I was leaving around 6 p.m and it was quite challenging for a first year student yeah wow okay that's that's uh that's crazy and what about like you said that you start in October and end in June. How, how do your exams work? Do you have like dedicated sessions? Is it like once a month? What, what are the exams like? Yeah, just like the majority of Italy, we have dedicated sessions. And um, the sessions are um, classified like according to the beginning of the year, not academic year, but year. And so we can say that the first session is January and February, and then we have April session, and then June, July, and September, and the last one is December. And so we we have like seven sessions, but uh, for one subject, you can take the same subject uh, only for three three times in the same year. So you guys actually have a limit to the number of times you can attempt an exam? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, and well, they only changed that for a pandemic actually last year they told that uh, we can take more than three times but it's for COVID emergency so I think it's not going to be permanent and uh, like on the off chance that you fail an exam three times w what happens like do you have to repeat the year or do you have to wait until next year H how does that work no, uh, I think it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, but you don't need to repeat any semester or year. And after your third time, you can take the exam like next year again. But, um, you know, like you don't repeat the year, but uh, you still like behind the actual schedule. Okay, interesting. Do you have mandatory classes? Like, do you have a certain percentage that you have to attend? Yes, actually, almost all of the classes have the 75% of attendance and you have to attend. 
Okay, so seventy five percent is quite high, but understandably. Um, and how do how, how does like clinical experience work? Because you said that once you pass first year, uh, you have the mornings for the hospital. Like, when do you start clinical experience? What's the clinical experience like? Uh, how much time do you spend in the hospitals? Like, give paint me the full picture of clinical experience in Torino. Um. Actually, the reason why I chose Turin that I heard that they start the clinical experience in the first year, but um, to be honest, it was like, in general, the clinical experience is below my expectations. Uh, because in first year, we had only like one week of rotation in the hospital and we were able to see the patients in the wards and we were able to, you know, take anamnesis, take blood pleasures, listen to chest and heart, etc. But after that, um, like that's it for the first year, and you have to deliver an essay about it. And after that, in second year, you have also like, um, how can I say, uh, like the heart dissection, like not with the actual human heart, but uh, animal heart. And after that, in the third year, you have like four to six weeks of um, clinical experience which uh, most of us couldn't have because of COVID-19, because they put the clinical experience in the second semester of the third year, but uh, we weren't there. And after that, the amount increases, like the uh, number of the weeks increases, but unfortunately, uh, like I couldn't get any clinical experience in the hospital because the pandemic started and only like a few students uh, had time to do that. So right now we are waiting to go back to hospital um yeah i know that like a lot of students i talked to said the same thing about their practical experience got cancelled but i mean so the f if you do know the four to six weeks that you were meant to spend in the hospital do you know how that was meant to be divided like is it four to six weeks full time do you have like certain operations you have to see were there certain tasks you had to complete or was it shadowing in different departments do you know do you have any idea how it would have worked if it wasn't for covid um especially for the third year it, it was focused on internal medicine general surgery and public health and so like for internal medicine you can choose between like different uh, types of wards and it also depends on the number of the places in certain times because uh, many students are trying to get into the wards and uh, you have to make a, a choosing list and they put you into a ward and you have to follow the schedule shadow the doctors uh, you can ask questions you can see the patients and um, also for general surgery like uh, the same you can follow the doctors and the patients and That's so if you're lucky you can see an operation i'm i'm shocked so it, it works on a ranking system so the mm. ranking is based on your grades then like no, no. not every uh, student I gets didn't the... mean ranking oh. but um, they always give a priority to the upper classes so uh because oh, okay, okay. Uh, of course they have uh mo they are more in rush to complete their clinical experiences and like after then, you can choose the your favorite words and if the time schedule fits, if the number of the places is available, you can get into it. Okay, okay, I I understand a bit better now. Um, and I sorry, I had a question, but I kind of forgot about it. Okay, so you do people basically you have to schedule your own clinical experience but everyone has to do a certain amount and in certain departments yes, yeah yeah sure okay and um so i should have asked this in the exam part but like are your exams mostly oral are they mostly written is it a combination of both what is the exam modality uh in turin okay like in general uh in italy it's uh, heavily oral based and same thing applies with turin uh, only in the first two years, like it's like almost 50% to 50% oral and written. But uh, after that, it's uh, more oral uh, exam. And even if you have written exams, because sometimes like you have to pass everything part first, and then you have to comp complete oral anyway. Uh, for example, in fourth year, like most of our classes are 
like that, we have to complete some open questions. And if we pass the written part, we can take the oral. Okay, so like pretty standard. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, all of Italy basically has to get used to oral exams eventually. Uh, um, I, and I also mm-hmm. forget to add, um, uh, in the first year you have, um, we have uh, the anatomy and histo- histology uh, lectures and you can use the histology lab to see the cells and the structures. And um, also after us, they managed to complete a simulation center in the hospital. And you can see the 3D anatomical structures uh, and some, you know, mannequins. But uh, like (laughs) when you go there, you will see me because uh, we didn't have the chance to go to simulation center yet. Yeah, I feel like COVID has ruined the experience of so many students. Yeah, Yeah. but okay, like actually I I would like to come back to this because towards the end of the interview, I'm going to ask you about like the teaching facilities. But before we uh, move on to that, what what are the tuition fees in Turin like? Like what are the average prices that international students pay? Are there reductions? Is it based on grades? Um, Basically how much like to the university can a student expect to pay? Okay, first of all, there is no difference uh, when it comes to payments. There is no difference between international and Italians. And there is a, a highest amount of pay, fee uh, in the university, which is like almost 3,000, I guess, like around 2,800. And But uh, you have to deliver your um, income documents to, you know, to determine your EDA value. And according to that, they decrease the amount of the fee. But also so there's the minimum payment, which is like 156 euros every year, no matter what you have to pay that. Yeah, but I mean, 156 euro is nothing and it's like the taxes. So um, Yeah, but so, usually it's a little bit higher than that. Ah, okay. Um, so that's kind of like based on income. Are there like scholarships or merit-based reductions, grants? Like, uh, yeah. how, how does that really work? Um, as you might know, Turna uh, belongs to Piemont region. And for Piemont region, uh, like, of course, every other region in Italy, we have an institution who gives you the scholarships, accommodation, food and libraries and everything. And it's called Edisu. And um, you can apply to Edisu to get a scholarship or accommodation. And it's, of course, both income and merit based. So you both have to be like uh, under certain values of income. And you also have to show some good amount of credits every year. Yeah, that's that's so generous, though, because you get like food as well and accommodation. Yeah, not always, but even if you can't, you know, can't be selected for accommodation as food, uh, they give you some discounts in Mensa, which uh-huh. is good. Yeah, that's that's really good. I mean, free food is always good food. I mean, even if it's like uh, discounted. So if a student doesn't get a scholarship and they need to find accommodation, like what would be the options and what are kind of the different price ranges? Like... Um, for example, if I want a private room in a shared house, not a private house, where I can walk to university within 30 minutes, how much should I expect to pay in rent? Do you have any idea? Okay, before coming to the accommodation uh, amount, I have to say that um, the biggest problem with the hospital, um, like University of Turin, like mostly its buildings in the city center, but unfortunately our hospital is uh, quite far away from the city center, and it's actually called another city, which is Orbasano, and the hospital Orbasano. name is Mulegi. Yes, Let so it's quite far it. away, but um, uh, you might choose to live in Orbasano, which is quite cheaper than Turin. But also, you might uh, choose to live in city center, uh, depends on your choice. And for the oh, accommodation prices, yeah. Yeah, it's quite far. That's why uh, the first year was very challenging to attend all the lectures. And uh, how so, how long does it take on uh, transport? Um, I used to live in city center in first year, so it was taking like around um, 70, 80 minutes, depends on the traffic. Wow! Traffic. 
yeah, I mean, it's huge for Italy because, um, like, the cities are usually small, but, yeah. And if you uh, try to choose, like, somewhere between city center and hospital and, like, the peripheral areas, um, you can spend, like, 30 to 40 uh, minutes. Okay, and how, how do you usually uh, transport? Like, is there one bus? Do you have to take a train on a bus? Um, we can take bus only, not train or metro to hospital. And there's only one bus actually that goes to hospital and it, we call it, it's like some really bus and number 43. So it uh, takes you from the hospital and um, goes to a certain station. And in that station, you can choose whatever you're taking uh, according to your location. Wow, that's crazy. I, I did not expect it to be so far. So would you recommend students live on campus and be really far away from the city? Or do you think the commute is kind of worth being close to other things and having a lot to do? Um, commute is worth to be there. And um, if you also want to you know, get other things done, attend language schools or do other things, I recommend to live in Turin. But if you don't want to spend time with that and you want to focus your study so hard, like many people also choose to live in Orbasano. Wow. And what are the price differences like for accommodation in Orbasano or in Turin? Okay, uh, first thing to know about Turin is uh, quite student city because we have uh, UNITO, but also the Politecnico. So we oh, have yeah. new huge universities and there are thousands of students. And um, you can find a student-friendly accommodation easily, but uh, also the prices are like getting higher in the city center. Uh, like in the city center, if you want to rent a room, like you can uh, pay around like 400. Like, and the, there's no, you know, like upper, yeah. upper limit to that. Uh, and of course, like when you use um, another place, then it might decrease, like uh, you can find a room around like 300 euros and uh, you can even rent an apartment, your own, own apartment, like uh, around like 600 euros. Okay, so that's higher than, I mean, it makes sense because the North is a very rich region. So it makes sense that the cost of living is slightly higher. I thought maybe it would be slightly cheaper though, because Turin is like student um, focused, yeah, but that's still quite reasonable. Still cheaper than Milano or yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that is like a nice in-between for uh, Milan. And okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still so shocked that it's so far away. Like I just, I don't know why, but I really did not expect that. Um, at all well, so get used to that <laughs> because like you know especially i used to live in a big city so uh, my minimum average time is to like two hours to arrive somewhere so it's not a big deal for me oh, all right are you originally from like istanbul or izmir like one of those big yeah, cities yeah i'm from izmir that's why yeah yeah i knew it the second <laughs> you said that i was like definitely gonna be either izmir or uh istanbul so then Okay, considering the hospital is far and your classes are far, how does that affect the teaching facilities? Like, what facilities are available to you since you're so far away from the city? Um, actually, like, the whole hospital, the San Luigi Hospital, is now dedicated to English medicine. And mm -hmm. we have classrooms, the histology lab, microbiology lab, and the simulation center that I mentioned. Uh, all of them there, uh, like you don't need to go different places to get different kind of lectures, uh, which is good, I think. Uh, it has its own library, own Mensa. Uh, but uh, of course, you can, uh, if you want, you can visit the actual anatomy uh, building or like other departments building in the city if you want to get some, you know, uh, extra lectures or attend some certain events. But it's not necessary, like I said. Uh, what about like sporting facilities then? Like, the, does the university have a gym? Do you have football, tennis fields? Uh, like, what are the sporting facilities? Like, do you have an idea? In San Luigi Hospital, we have uh, a football place, and people can actually run inside the, like, inside the parts of the hospital, but 
Uh, it's nice. not, you know, it's not highly demanded though. Uh, but we have like in Torino, we have um, sports facilities and um, like it's called Juice Torino. Uh, people can check. And it's in Sao Paulo region of the uh, Turin. And it's, um, you know, like you can quite easily arrive there and do every kind of sports there. Uh, like there's no like no single certain place to go and do your exercise. Okay. And also okay. Uh, the at the dormitories offer gyms, or if you want to go to a private dormitory, you can find gym there. Is there a private uh, dorm in what, what was it called? Obasano? Ob Orbasano? Oh. Is there a private dorm there? Um, to be honest, I haven't heard. I only know mm -hmm. the ones in Turin. Um, because okay. Orbasano is like such a small um, commune and uh, like uh, it's like the apartments are rare and like mostly houses, you know. Okay, so that's so that's so interesting. So considering it's dedicated to the English course, like is your course quite big? What is the size of your class? What what is the average number of students that show up? Like how what is what are what are your class dynamics like? Um, the, uh, I like that it's quite diverse. Um, um, another good thing is that um, we are like huge number of people, like uh, you might know, because the number of places is much more in Turin. 74 uh, Europeans and 34 non-Europeans. Wow, that uh, is quite big. 100 right students. Now, we have like almost like around 90 students in the classroom. And like you can find people all over the world. And from every age, from every, uh, like, from every background. Okay. And so, like, uh, is there maybe, like, for example, like, in our class, the majority we have uh, are Italian. Like, not half, but maybe, like, 30% of the class is uh, Italian. Do you, like, 100 is so much bigger than I expected. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I can say like 60% of people are Italian, okay. but the rest is from the world, <laughs> like from everywhere. Nice. So you're quite, quite diverse. Mm -hmm. And how, how do uh, your classmates get along? Like, I'm not saying like, give me the gossip, but like, do you generally uh, work together? Are you collaborative? Does everyone share resources? Do you work with the above years and below years? Like, how, how is the general like teamwork in Turin? Um, first of all, uh, I I have to say again that like we are the first English class, so uh, as a whole class, we always have to you know um, deal with some problems with the organizations and check the professors, check the schedule because uh, it's also their first time to um, conduct an English course, and sometimes like uh, they lack of something or they miss something, so we just you know discuss. Uh, e like in class group and then we try to you know warn them well, apart from that like uh, we used to have some sports events or like what can i say aperitivo events uh, in the first year and second year and right now like i didn't see most of them for like such a long time but yeah i mean it's it's understandable so you you get along uh with your classmates what about your professors how would you describe the quality of the professors like are they good do they provide a lot of resources uh, are they helpful like in general are you happy um like yeah i mean in general i'm happy but there are some subjects that i'm not satisfied with uh, because of the professors um i understand that they struggle sometimes um creating the English material on time and delivering them. But uh, like for some courses, like actually we didn't have English material at all. The wow. slides and everything were Italian and we had to find resources uh, by ourselves, you know, and that was you know, quite challenging. Um, in general, they are like listening to us, especially our dean is uh, like um, quite interested and helpful. But um, some uh, professors actually like uh, they act like uh, I don't have time for that. 
but mm. uh, you have to because like you're the professor of that course and the, of course they are improving like uh, especially like uh, from the lower classes uh, I hear like less problems because like after us they try to solve the problems but yeah I, I was going to ask that like do you think it's possible that maybe it's just because you guys were setting the way that there was a lot of problems to fix but yeah. now a lot of them are getting fixed because they do care okay yeah, they are also uh, um and so you mentioned that like sometimes english resources weren't available and you had to go in uh, Italian. Is there any sort of requirement of knowing a certain level of Italian? Are you expected to learn it? Does the mm -hmm. university provide classes? How how does it work with the Italian language? Okay, uh, I think the biggest negative thing about the uh, English course in Turin, um, they didn't provide any um, Italian course. Uh, in general, the university doesn't uh, provide free Italian course. Like it's uh, cost a lot of money and you can actually find cheaper courses outside uh, and after we complain about that situation they actually try to arrange a, an Italian teacher to international students in second year and they had like two months of um, two months of lectures but I didn't attend that because uh, in the first year I already found another Italian course outside of the university and I kept attending to that so of course, um, no matter where you go in Italy, uh, I know the courses are in English, but my biggest advice to start to learn Italian because the life is in Italian and everywhere you go, you have to solve your problems with Italian, especially in bureaucratic places because um, once you go there, you're international and you have huge amounts of paperwork and you have to know Italian. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And um, so start learning today. And of course, they don't, you know, um, drop you out uh, if you do, can't speak Italian. But um, when you go to uh, work in the hospital, if you can't speak Italian, you can't get the most out of it because you have to talk to patients. Not all of the doctors can speak good English. So you have to know some basics at least. Yeah, literally every single student, every single student that I have interviewed have all said, learn Italian before you come here. You have to learn <laughs> Italian as soon as possible. Like start today, learn Italian. But OK, yeah, but there's like no medicine is not like any other courses. Like uh, I have many friends from different courses and they come to Italy and they leave Italy without uh, speaking any Italian. But um, the, our job is to deal with people. So it's mandatory. Yeah, but there's there's no like uh, exam that you have to sit and pass to get to like clinical years, say. It's just like strongly recommended that you learn Italian as soon as possible. No, they didn't require any exam so far. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. This was honestly such an interesting interview. I learned so much about uh, Turin, but... I think that like summarizes the first part, which is where we talk about the university. And in the second part, I want to talk a little bit more about the city. Is there anything uh, you would like to add or advise to students about the university before we end the first part? Um, I think uh, if you're watching this video, you're doing good. Just try to learn more about everything. Uh, go and check the uh, website of Medinto. It's called Medinto, the English uh, medicine is called Medinto. So go and check it, check the courses and uh, know that in Italy in general, uh, the hands-on experience is uh, so little compared to other countries. And the theoret theoretical part is quite heavy. And if you are willing to do that, come. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to end the first part.